Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with my tutorials moving from electromagnetism to optics. This is video number two and I'm going to discuss waves. Specifically, I'm going to show you why we use F is X plus or minus V times T. So the previous video which is relevant to this is number one where I tried to motivate the topic of moving from electromagnetism to optics. Now before I begin, I'd just like to point out that I'm using a new recording uh, setup. I'm actually clearly recording on e-paper rather than using a camera. So you're going to have to, uh, I suppose, excuse my handwriting. It's not, it's not as good as it would be on regular paper. So what are waves? We need to, I suppose, define what a wave is. So a wave is a disturbance, and it's usually a disturbance of a medium. And intrinsically, we have an understanding of what a disturbance of a medium is like. For example, we know what waves in a string are like, waves in the water or waves in the air. But we're going to be dealing with electromagnetic waves. And the reason these are important or interesting or special is because they do not require a medium to propagate. If you'd like to know more about that, just uh, Google perhaps the, the luminif luminiferous ether. Uh, that was a, a big problem or a, a big question in physics perhaps a hundred years ago. So how do we generate a wave? Although we're going to be discussing electromagnetic waves, it's easy, I suppose, or helps us to think about them as mechanical waves, for, ex for example, a wave on a string. So on the left, the black line, uh, bottom left, the black line perhaps represents a string. And what I've done is I've picked up the string and I've dropped it down, creating a wave which is propagating, in this case, to the right. And it's propagating to the right with a speed v. So that's, that's our wave. So it looks something like this if you were to zoom in on it. And this particular profile is called a Gaussian. And the functional form for Gaussian is e to the minus ax squared. So a is just a constant giving you the height and then you have x squared. Okay, So just note that this is called a Gaussian, uh, Gaussian function or Gaussian form. You'll see that it's all over physics. You can't move anywhere, I suppose, in physics without looking at Gaussian waveforms. So the next thing we need to discuss is what is the placeholder given to a wave? So if we're writing the wave down, well, we use the Greek letter psi. So if you look at the bottom left, we have the Greek letter psi. And so in order to create our wave, we need to have, uh, we need to have the dependence on position. And we need to have depend, there's an end there, and we need to have dependence on time. So if there, well, we have three spatial dimensions. We have x, we have y, and we have z. And of course, we have, we have time. But we can either, if we have, depending on how many spatial dimensions, we talk about a one-dimensional wave, two-dimensional wave, or a three-dimensional wave. All right? So in this particular case, what I've drawn is the wave psi, a function of only x and t. So it is a one-dimensional wave. But if we were to write this, it would be, we'll say, instead of using psi, let's say y is a function of x and t. So that leads us to say psi is the wave function. So that's why we call psi the wave function, because it gives the mathematical form of the, the wave itself. All right. So what we're looking at here is a one dimensional wave function. Um, right. So what, what, what can we do with this? Well, the shape of the disturbance or the wave at any instant can be found by holding time constant at that time or that, that case. So let's take a Gaussian. So let's say e to the minus a, and just accept the, what I'm about to write for the moment, x minus vt. So let's say that this is our wave function. It's a function of, it's a one dimensional wave function. And this actually gives us, this gives us the shape of a Gaussian wave function moving to the right, or Gaussian uh, wave moving to the right. Now, if I want to find out what the wave looks like, let's say I want to find out a time t is equal to 2. I want to see what the shape of the wave looks like. What I will need to do is get rid of t and put in 2. Or if I want to find out what the shape of the wave is like at the start, at time t is equal to 0, well of course you plug t is equal to 0 in here. And you plug t is equal to 0 in here. Alright? So that's how we find out what the shape of the wave is. And what we get, if we plugged in, this this should be, uh, that's v, it's like there now, that's v, times zero, and if you plug that in, what you'd actually find, you'd get this here. Okay, and let's say this is this here is t is equal to two. Then what we'd have gotten earlier on is this particular uh, this particular shape here. 
So that is our wave function. Now we will start just deriving x. f is a function of x plus or minus v times t. So when the wave moves, you can either move with the wave or look at it from a distance. So what we're going to do is consider what the wave looks like for two different people. So or two different observers. So let's say I have let's say I have my Cartesian coordinate system here. Okay, and I'm going to call this particular Cartesian coordinate system, say there's y, that's y and x, but you'll see in a moment why I'm like, uh, this is y. there's there's x and we have generate a wave. So I'm just going to draw my observer here. This is my observer with his hat. And let's generate the wave. So here's my wave, like this. And the wave is propagating to the right with a speed v, or with a velocity v, I suppose, because it has a direction. And let's say there is another person, another observer, and this observer is moving along with the wave itself. And he he's moving along with the wave itself. So at some point later, so we, uh, we want to analyze what the wave looks like for the person with the wave and the person at the origin or in the S frame of reference. So the person w moving with the wave is going to be in S prime, S prime frame of reference. So we're going to have X prime, Y prime, and S prime. And of course, the wave then, the wave it's going to look something like this. Well, it's going to look the exact same because we're not going to change the, the, the we're not going to change the shape of the wave. So that means we need to draw our observer as well. So bear with me, and I draw this. This person is traveling along with the wave. Now, what we want to do is see what does the wave look like for the person in blue and the person in red or pink. So what does it look like for the person standing at the origin watching the wave propagate away and the person propagating with the wave or moving with the wave? Now, there's a very important there's a very important thing to note here, and that's the person moving with the wave doesn't see its profile change. As far as it's concerned, the wave is stationary, okay? So it, do it there is no dependence um on you know, it, it looks the same. It's not changing. It's not moving anywhere as far as he's concerned. So let's look at some of our distances. First of all, note that the distance from the S frame of reference, uh, sorry, this should be S, I think I got rid of it. This is the S frame of reference. So the distance from the S frame of reference to the S prime frame of, re frame of reference, or the distance from the origin to where the wave is now, is going to be the velocity of the wave multiplied by time. Now, the distance then from the observer in the S frame of reference to the center of the wave, where it is now, is going to be this distance here and let's call that distance x because the reason it's x is because we're talking about the s frame of reference so we've x however for the observer who is with the wave he only sees this distance so he sees x prime and if you put the lot together then we find that x oh, excuse me that x prime is equal to x minus vt it's very straightforward. Now, I'm sure you can accept that if the wave was moving to the right, we would actually get a plus sign here. So we can say that in general, x prime is x minus v times t, or plus or minus v times t, depending on which way it's moving. So what we can say is this, that if it's x uh, minus vt, it's going to the right. And if it's x plus vt, it's moving to the left. All right, so that's important. Now we're after working out what the, the dependence on the wave is when it's moving. So this is of course from the observer at the origin, the stationary observer at the origin, the person who is not moving with the wave. So the thing about, it, we had a moment ago we said that the wave function psi is a function of x and t. But we can see here that, that th this is for the observer at the origin, or the stationary observer at the origin. But it can also be written as psi a function of x prime. This is for the person moving with the wave. Now why is there no t time dependence? Well, because the shape of the wave, or where it's going, is time independent. Because as far as he's concerned, the wave isn't moving, it's just standing there. But for this observer, the wave is moving, so there is a time dependence. So you can have psi as a function of x and t, or simply function of x prime. 
So we of course know that we can rewrite this because we know what what x prime is. So we get x plus or minus b times t, like that. And I want to rewrite this because it's a function of v times t. So I'm actually going to write f like this. Okay. So I hope you can follow me so far. So we say that this is the uh, the most general form of the one-dimensional wave equation. Okay. To be more specific, we have only to choose the shape and then substitute x plus or minus v times t in for x in the function. So we saw earlier on, as I said, that we have e to the minus a x. Um, it was e to, e to the minus a x squared, which becomes e to the minus a x plus or minus v times t to be squared. And that's where we get x is plus or minus v, uh, x plus or minus v times t. So, thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And you might also click on uh, or give me, excuse me, some positive feedback. Thank you.